But there are different areas of your life. You know, there is the spiritual, the soulish. There is the physical. There's physical health. There's uh, financial. There's relational uh, relationships with people, all these different areas. If w- you are to make a list of every area of your life, even educational, every area of your life, you should make a list and then you should put after that, I <clears throat> should abound in this area. I should abound in this area. Why? Because God wants you to abound in every area in a godly way. And so you should abound in it. <clears throat> if you do that, you would be experiencing the salvation in fullness of what God has for you. Now, okay, let's get, let's get back to what actually happened when you got saved. Now, when Adam and Eve sinned, okay, we have to kind of go back to the beginning. It was a threefold fall. What does that mean? That means they fell in three areas, spirit, soul, and body. It was a threefold disobedience, right? Which is why it was threefold sin. Now, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, God tells him, But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, <clears throat> thou shalt not eat of it, for in the day that you eat thereof, you will surely die. <clears throat> Notice this. The day that you eat of the tree, that day you will die. So, But now we see him eat that tree, and then we see that Adam lived to be 930 years. So Adam did not physically die the day he ate of the fruit of that tree. So we know that he died, but he didn't die physically. We know he didn't die soulish in the sense that his soul ceased to operate. We know that, uh, but we do know that his understanding was darkened, but that was because <clears throat> the life in his spirit had ceased, and now the very essence of life in his spirit was the essence of death. So now it was sin and death in his spirit, and his spirit was contaminated, it was killed, it died. And because of that, it contaminated his soul and made him see things differently. It made him think differently. And so his soul, in that sense, um, <clears throat> was darkened, right? Now, we have to understand that the word die uh, or death does not mean to cease to exist. It simply means <clears throat> separation from something. For instance, <clears throat> if a person <clears throat> dies physically, then their spirit is separated from their body. When your spirit leaves your body, the Bible says that the body without the spirit is dead. And, it's, and he's given the analogy that faith without works or faith without corresponding actions is dead the same way the body is dead whenever the spirit leaves it. So we know that it's the spirit within that's the real us, and that's what gets born again. When you get recreated, when you get saved, you get born again, and that the, the spirit is what actually gets changed. Now, when your spirit gets changed, it gets recreated. Life is put into it. It comes alive now, but it's with the life of God. Now, before, your spirit was still functioning. It was just functioning from a dead position. It was functioning from separation from God, and therefore, because it was separated from God, it was in alignment or connected to Satan. Now, notice here. <clears throat> uh, the day, it said that the day that they ate thereof, they would surely die. Their spirit died immediately. But their, now their soul rebelled, as I said, and their body went along with their soul. When Jesus redeemed man, he had to redeem all three parts of man. Now, we can see this, and I'm giving you short, the, sh- the short you know, study on this. <clears throat> so how did he redeem? He had, now, remember, you're a three-part being. You are a spirit. You have a soul. You live in a body. And your soul uh, has different aspects to it. Uh, and your spirit has different aspects. Now, there is a point where your soul and your spirit are joined together, and it takes the Word of God. Only the Word of God is sharp enough to divide between soul or spirit. Do you got that? So the, in many cases, they are so much alike in some areas and that they blend together in many areas. Now, <clears throat> so first off, Jesus shed, and we're talking about his redemption and how he redeemed man on a threefold part. First off, he shed his blood in the garden. And it said, remember, he, had dro- he sweat drops of blood. And Isaiah 53 says, the chastisement of our peace was upon him. And this is talking about uh, his soulish aspect. So he shed blood for your soul in the garden. 
That was the first time he shed his blood. The second time he shed his blood was at the whipping post. And by his stripes, you were healed. That's physical healing. Now, the third part, or the third time he shed his blood, of course, was on the cross. And that was for the forgiveness of sins. That was for the uh, ability to be made right with God and for that penalty to be paid. And so now that would have to do with your spirit. So Jesus redeemed you, spirit, soul, and body. Now, we see, and here's the thing, right now our spirit is already changed. It's recreated. The life of God was put into our spirit when we got born again. But now notice your soul and your body weren't changed. The minute, you know, you, maybe you went down front. Now, you could have got healed, right? But that didn't mean you never got sick again. And so, uh, you know, there could be a physical change to your body, but uh, that would have been just as a result of the salvation or of your faith in God at that time. But because, now understand, your soul uh, has been paid for. But now, uh, the Bible talks about us working out our salvation. It talks about the, unto the saving of our soul. And so it talks about our soul being saved. So one of the ways, we've heard this said before, I was saved, I'm being saved, and I shall be saved. Well, those are all good terminologies. We could say it this way. My spirit was saved, right? And so I was saved. Then my soul is being saved because by the renewing of the mind, my life is being transformed. So my soul is being saved as I renew it. And my body shall be saved in the sense that at a point in time, my body will receive glorification and become, and that's when he says that what is mortal will put on immortality. What is corrupt will put on incorruption. And so that's a point in the future. Now, now listen carefully. This is important. People say, well, then our bodies aren't saved. No, I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that now we have the first fruits of our salvation which is the Holy Spirit dwelling in us. And the first fruits in that area means that we have union with God in our spirit. It means that we can have the mind of Christ as our mind is renewed. And it means that our bodies can receive healing, which is actually a foretaste of that glorification at which time your body will be glorified and you will never get sick in your body again. Your body will become absolute. Now listen, right now, right now, by faith in God and by faith in the uh, redemption of Jesus in what he did in the garden, at the whipping post, on the cross. By faith in that, we can physically, in our body, become immune to sickness and disease right now. Sickness and disease does not have the right to live in our bodies. Our bodies are not our own. They were bought with a price and they were bought by Jesus. But now, as our mind, as our soul is renewed, as our mind is renewed to the Word of God, then we start to see the truth of this. And as you believe that, then you become more and more immune and then you get sick less and less. That's the way it works until you begin to walk in what we call divine health. Now, if Jesus can heal you every time you get sick, and let's say, you know, it's, it's we were joking about this the other day, um, I woke up and I said, oh, great, it's Groundhog Day again. If you remember the movie Groundhog Day, uh, every day was the same, and, and, but he got to relive it and he learned every day and he got better and better. So, you know, take a hint from that. So <clears throat> if as you learn these things, as your mind is renewed to the Word of God, then you, st now, well, let me get back over to the part of us talking about healing. I don't want to get off that. If as you learn that healing is part of that redemption and that you can walk in divine health and that divine health is God's will. Then you walk in divine health more and more. Now, if you know that every time you got sick, and let's say every morning, this is what got me on the Groundhog Day thing, every morning when you woke up in 30 minutes, if you got sick, God would heal you, could heal you. You could have faith in him. He could. So every day you could get sick and he could heal you, right? Now, that's not the way it would be in the afterlife, in, in, in eternity. That's not the way it's going to be when your body is glorified. At that point, your body won't even be able to get sick. Do you get that? Because your body will be glorified and become immortalized and it won't even be able to get sick. But, but while you're here, you can receive healing every day. And if, you, if every time you have faith in God, 
he will heal you, then you can actually walk in divine health by just believing right now he heals me, right now he heals me, this second he heals me, right now that life that heals me at any time can keep me well. So see, actually you can walk in divine health right now as a foretaste of a time when you don't have to do that by faith, it will be a part of what you are because you've been glorified and immortalized. Now, in saying that, it is uh, one of the ways, and this is something that uh, I felt like the Lord spoke to me the other day. He said, faith is living now in the preview of eternity. See, everything we do by faith right now, all we're doing now in the, in the natural realm is living our life now the way it will be lived in heaven. I'm just using heaven as a term meaning after we leave this earth, okay? After we die or whatever it is or Jesus comes and gets us, whatever it is. So there is a, we're just living in a preview of that. In other words, what it, we can by faith receive now what we have, but whenever we're there, we won't have to do it by faith because we will have been glorified. Does that make sense? Now, hopefully you get this. Now, um, in this, see, right now, okay, let's say, your spirit is saved the minute you accept Jesus' sacrifice and his substitution for you whenever you make him Lord of your life. Your soul is saved by the renewing of your mind. Now, remember, uh, Jesus even talked about a person that could, how bad it would be to gain the world but lose his soul. You see, what are you doing in exchange for your soul? See, your soul, uh, <clears throat> if, if the more you walk according to the world, uh, Romans 12 tells us that we are to have our minds renewed to the Word of God and that we are not to be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind, which means we're not supposed to be walking like the world. But the way you don't walk like the world is you have to have your mind renewed, which means if your mind isn't renewed, you're going to walk like the world. So, so your soul is saved by the renewing of the mind, right? <clears throat> your body is saved from sickness or disease by faith in the stripes of Jesus, right? Now, your body has not received or experienced, let me put that away, your body has not experienced full redemption yet. Why? But it will when it's glorified, like I said. When your body is glorified, you will not need divine healing because you will automatically have constant divine health. Now, until then, you can receive divine healing by faith in God and in Jesus' sacrifice. When you know and walk in the truth of the Word of God concerning the salvation of provided by Jesus. You can walk in divine healing on a second-by-second -second basis. Now, I've already talked about this. I'm just giving it to you the way I wrote it down. When you walk in divine healing second-by-second, -second, then it's continuous, and that's called divine health. Now, so what happened when you got saved? We're right back to our question. Well, first off, you received the eternal life of God in your spirit. <clears throat> As you renew your mind, you allow the divine life of God in your spirit to flow from your spirit into and through your mind, your soul, right? Now, the truth of the Word of God at that point begins to determine what and how you think and act. You get that? And the more God's life is in your mind through the renewing of your mind, <clears throat> the more God's Word and will is lived out through your life, and that divine life flows through you. Now, the minute you got saved, okay, also known as born again. Now, from records in the Bible, we really only have Jesus talking about being born again once, technically, right? When he said, you must be born again. And that's the term everyone has kind of grabbed a hold of. And, and it's a good term. I'm not, I'm not dissing it, all right? Why, why? Why is born again a good term? Well, because you should start living a brand new life a brand new type of life in area, every area of your life. It's like you got born again into a brand new world, into a brand new way of doing things. See, this is how you're supposed to do it. Now, and so you should be, to be saved means to be saved out from something and saved to something. And that means to be, you're born again. And it says when you're baptized, <coughs> baptism, when you come out of the water, so to speak, you're to walk in newness of life as if you're a brand new creation, because you are, and now you're walking this new life, which should be totally patterned after the life of Jesus. Now, <clears throat> as far, now listen carefully. 
as far as God is concerned, you were translated out of the realm, power, authority, dominion of darkness, and it no longer has any right or dominion over you as far as God is concerned. Now, <clears throat> as you renew your mind of the Word of God, it will become as, as far as you're concerned too. But as far as God is concerned, that's not a problem anymore. Sin, sickness, disease, having authority over you, that's not a problem. In God's mind, that's not a problem for you anymore. He has already delivered you from that. Now, this is, now watch. As far as God is concerned, as soon as you were translated out of darkness, the Bible says, you were translated into the kingdom of God's dear son, Jesus. Right? So you went out of one kingdom into another. <clears throat> now, as far as God is concerned, the devil has no authority, no dominion, no right, and no jurisdiction over any part of your life ever from then on. You get that? Ever. So that means the minute you got born again, now you might not have heard this when you got born again, but the minute you got born again, you, as far as God is concerned, you never had to be sick again. You never, I mean, you, you name it. All these things, we're going to talk about it. Um, but now notice, <clears throat> it is then, once you're born again, as far as God's concerned, the devil has nothing to do with you anymore. It is then your choice of whether you listen to the devil and obey him. It's your choice. The devil can't make you do it. He's got to entice you. He's got to draw you away of your own desires, right? That's what James says. As far as God is concerned, you never again have to be sick in mind or body. Now, sick in mind can be all kinds of what we know of as sicknesses, uh, but it can also be fear. It can be uh, worry. It can be uh, anger. You know, these kind of things that, that go beyond uh, what should be. The moment you were, and listen to this, this is big. The moment you were translated into God's kingdom, God transferred all the assets of Jesus's heavenly bank account, okay, over to you. Everything Jesus had, he transferred over to you the minute you got in the kingdom. I mean, the minute you came into Christ, everything got handed to you. Man, the rings put on, the robes put on, it's yours. Why? Because now you're a part of this family. Everything Jesus has, you have. You got that? Now, there's all kinds of scripture we could be going into. I just don't have time to do it. As far as God is concerned, you can and should function in every area just like Jesus would. Exact same thing, right? That means no sickness. It doesn't infect you. You infect it. You jump on it. It doesn't jump on you, all right? What you've got is stronger. Now, and not only do, does that, not only does it not have the uh, right to jump on you, but you have the right to attack it and kill it. Now, that means that you have the mind of Christ. That means no fear ever of anything. No fear. Absolutely no fear. Why? Because you understand, know, and believe the love of God. We talked about this. That means no lack of any kind. That means no lack of power to get the job done. No lack of wisdom. It means no lack of provision. See, Jesus was a, a blessed person. He had whatever he needed it when he needed it, and he didn't have to carry around all the money with him to buy it all. When he needed it, he just sent Peter fishing. That was one thing that he did, right? So, that means no lack, no lack of provision, no lack of finances, no lack of food, no lack of nothing. You got to know that's bad English, but you get that. No lack, it, it, because everything in Jesus' account was transferred to your account. As he is, so are we in this world, right? Everything he has, we have, okay? Now, that means that nothing shall by any means hurt you. That, Luke 10, 19, okay? That means that no plague will come near your dwelling. That means that you're the head and not the tail. That means that you're blessed going in and blessed going out. Amen? That means that every spiritual blessing was already transferred into your account the minute you got born again. Then you just had to find out what was there. Right? There's times when you have to go to the bank and you have to uh, get a balance and you say, I need the balance on this account. Why? Because you have to find out what's in your account. That's what you do with this book called the Bible. This is your account. This was Jesus' account, but now it got transferred to you, so it's your account, but you've got to go in there and find out what's in your account. You've got to find out what has been deposited to your account. So, that, what does that mean? That means you're not waiting on God to heal you. That means He's waiting on you to know and believe and receive what is already in your account. 
He said, it'd make no sense to sit at home and cry about not having any money in your pocket whenever you got money in your bank account and you just keep sitting there and never going in and getting any, any out. The people look at you like, why are you acting foolish? you got all that money in the bank and yet uh, you don't want to go uh, get it out or whatever. You just won't go and get it out. But you got the money in the bank. Go, why are you crying about not having any money? See, it doesn't make any sense. But that's what Christians do. Oh, why won't God heal me? Oh, no, no, you got to understand. He's already done it. It's already in your account. He's just waiting for you to believe it and receive it. And when you believe it and receive it, you shall have it. It's that simple. Mark 11, 22, 23, going into 24. So you have to realize that he, you're not waiting on him to heal you. He, you're waiting, he's waiting on you to believe and receive. All right? Now, and, and once you believe and receive, now you're going to act like it and you're going to talk like it. That's how you can tell you got it. Now, that means that God has already given you everything that pertains to life and godliness. He's already blessed you with every spiritual blessing in heavenly life. This is already done. This is all put into your account. It's just sitting there waiting for you to believe it and receive it. It's just that. I know this sounds simple. And I know it sounds too easy and too good to be true, but it is, right? Now, what that means is this too. That means that you should be living in life and, and not just in life, but life in abundance. Amen? You should have life in abundance. Now, li abundant life is, is not having to worry about your food. See, whenever you have life in abundance and you're living life in abundance, you don't have to worry about, do we have enough to eat? You know, do we have enough toilet paper? I know that's the big thing right now. You know, that's it's life in abundance, amen? Not having to worry about your job. Well, you know, they laid me off. I hope they don't think that they can do without me. I hope I get my job back when it starts back up. I hope everything goes back. Uh, no, actually, no, you ought to be owning the company or owning a company. You ought to be owning a business or something along those lines. And you determine the effect of your, because whatever you own will be blessed because you own it. It means not having to worry about your health, not having to worry about your kids' health, not having to worry about... Let's say even your dog's health. Now, that's, that's for you to worry about or whatever it is. But, uh, you know, you shouldn't have to worry about any of these things. And you shouldn't have to be having fear of this, especially in even the things that are going on now. Why? Because abundant life, life in abundance, is living a life free of fear. No fear of anything at any time. Peace. See, if you have fear in any area, fear has torment and you don't have peace. You, have to have, you should be living in peace. Eternal life is peace. And so you realize that you're more than a conqueror, that you're an overcomer. You realize that greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. God is bigger in you than the devil is in this world. Amen? This is what it means of what you got saved. Now, all I'm saying is when you say I got saved, what that should say is I have salvation. What that should mean is I have prosperity in every area. I have health. I have abundance of health. I, I don't have lack. I walk in the fullness of God. I walk in everything that he has for me. That's what salvation is. Salvation is walking in Yeshua. Salvation is walking in Soteria. Salvation is walking in Jesus and having the fullness of everything Jesus has. God has transferred everything in Jesus' account to you. Now, beloved, it's time for you to make a decision. Okay, yes, bless God, I'm saved. That means I have everything I need. I've been blessed with every spiritual blessing in heaven places. I have everything that pertains to life in God. Bless God, it's mine now. And as soon as you make that decision, those things will start to come into your life. That's the way it works. You believe it, you say it. Well, you say it, you believe it, you receive it, and you have it. Simple as that.